I was two years into a career in the New York State Fire Department as a firefighter, and it was not really easy, you know? Um, I was in a firehouse where there were no women, where I was the only person who was LGBTQ identified. There was not a lot of diversity. Hi, my name is Brooke Guinan, and I identify as a trans woman. Growing up and coming out was kind of a, an interesting process, um, largely because I didn't really have the language to define how I saw myself. I remember being in fifth grade, and we were reading the story of Ichabod Crane around Halloween time in school, and the teacher read a part describing Ichabod Crane's long nose. I laughed, and I must have laughed or giggled in a way that was slightly too girly. And one of the boys turned around and said, you're so gay. And I had never heard that word before, so I, you know, I said, what does that mean? And it wasn't until later on that day that one of my friends on the school bus told me what it meant. And, and she was like, you know, it means when boys like other boys. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Well, I guess that makes sense. Um, the main thing, I guess, just was that there was finally a word to describe how I was different. I really held on to that for, for a long time until really I was in college. It was right before I left for college. I had gone to Blockbuster and bought a previewed movie called Soldier's Girl. It's based on a real life series of events where this guy fell in love with this trans woman and his military buddies found out and they killed him for it. So obviously there's part of that story that's terrifying and sort of reinforces this idea that you should be fearful to be a trans and I certainly was, but it was also kind of the first time in my life that I ever really had a visual to put to some of the emotions that I had been feeling in my life. So I, I remember there's, there's one scene where the morning after they had slept together, him leaving and her feeling very self-conscious about being sort of vulnerable and exposed. And when he said something along the lines of, you're beautiful, and she kind of like pushed it off and was like, don't, no, I'm a mess. You know, I just woke up and I don't probably look very feminine. And, and he said, shh, not allowed to say negative things about yourself in my presence. You see this whole story in the expression of joy and someone seeing her for who she sees herself to be. And at the same time, seeing the sort of fear and shame and discomfort of still not completely existing outside of this concrete body, this, this form that you don't really feel like really tells the story of who you are. I identified so strongly with that scene and that image, and yet I had never really heard the story of a trans person before. And so that was when coming out became a little more difficult. I was finally able to identify myself in ways that felt more like me, but those ways weren't as simple as defining myself as gay or lesbian. You know, I don't think it was until two or three years after I graduated college and I had already started a career and that I really actually committed to transitioning and presenting as a woman and living my life as female. When I came out as, um, as a trans woman, I was about 23. I remember telling my parents I was going to start hormones. And that was also really difficult. My mother almost kicked me out of the house. She literally couldn't handle watching the change, the physical change. And she later told me that for her, she couldn't accept me as her daughter until she had, like, buried her son. And that was sort of really, really deep. Um, transition is a process not just for you but for everyone in your life and fortunately now my mom and I are as tight as I think you can be she's probably my best friend and my dad who is kind of your typical guy in a lot of ways you know he's He's big, tall, very kind of gruff looking. He's, uh, he's actually a lieutenant with the fire department. And he had some difficulty with it 
But again, I was really lucky. And my dad one time told me that, you know, it was his job as a parent to love me and figure out how he was going to do that. And it was my job to figure out who I was. And so I didn't come out to people in the fire department until I really had a strong sense of trust and, and there was a friendship, there was something there to justify me coming out to them and telling them this huge thing in my life um, that I wouldn't maybe just, you know, tell trust a stranger with. I've been really fortunate in finding places in the fire department that were safe and affirming and supportive. So in some ways, my, my identity in coming out was a great thing for me because it meant that I got to get involved in things that I was really passionate about, like training the fire department on LGBTQ diversity um, and working with the LGBTQ community in ways to better serve the public. So I, I met my husband a little over five years ago and we got married a little over two years ago. It's, it's just wonderful and I kind of appreciate that I don't ever have to question how he sees me. It kind of reminds me of that scene from Soldier's Girl. Even when I don't feel pretty or comfortable or like I fit into anyone's expectations or, or standards or model, I know that at least I'll always fit his. This is me at three years old. At this point in my life, I guess I was too young to really know any of what was coming. Life is about that journey, and while it's been hard and that journey has almost come to a close a couple of times, I'm fortunate that I'm still on that journey, and I think that we're a product of what we go through in our lives. And so I don't think I'd tell myself anything other than keep going, because I would want all the good and all the bad and all the hard and all the easy and the happy and the sad and the difficult and the unexplainable and everything. Because somehow it got me to where I am today, which is me. <laughs>